Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Should you publish domain events to other service boundaries or instead use integration events? Well, it's not as cut and dry as you might think. I'm gonna explain how I think about the two different types of events and which to use when. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So first, let's talk about domain events. And usually what people are referring to here is within a boundary, you have some specific code that performs some state change and then needs to notify another part of that boundary that it's occurred. So what it does is let's say we have three different consumers. It sends that message to the first consumer, sends it to the second consumer, and then finally sends it to the third consumer. The way that this is most often implemented is that because it's within the, all the same boundary, it's done in process. This is not using a message broker or an external queue of some sort. This is all done in memory, in process. And most times this is all wrapped within the same transaction. So that the kind of the main thing that was doing that state transition and then is publishing the event, that's usually that all events, all consumers of that event must actually succeed because they're all wrapped within the same transaction. I'm gonna create a video uh, separately from this in the future, so make sure to subscribe about what I think about this because it's not actually my preferred method, um, so stay tuned for that. So with integration events, usually these are used specifically for integrating with other service boundaries. So what we have here is we have our boundary, our publisher, just like before, but instead of doing uh, publishing a domain event, we're publishing what's called an integration event. So this is gonna be out of process that we send our message, our integration uh, event to the message broker, and then our message broker is distributing that to the various boundaries that are actually listening or care about that particular event. So the difference here between domain events and integration events is that domain events are very specific things that are happening within a boundary and integration events are things that you want to publish to the outside. So a lot of people equate these two to inside versus outside events, where inside events are domain events and outside events are integration events. So the question would be, why do we have to have two different types of events? Why do we have to have domain events and then separately integration events? Can't we just publish domain events as integration events? So that when we have a domain event that occurs within our boundary, we can call the various consumers and give them that event. But as well, we could also publish that domain event to our message broker and then send that event to the various outside other outside of our boundary um, services so that they consume them. So what's the problem with that? So I think most of the recommendations you'll find online are to have clear separation between domain events and integration events. Domain events being something that are inside events, only within a boundary, and they're never exposed outside of your service boundary. And if you need to expose something outside of your service boundary, then you'll create an integration event. However, I do not think it's that cut and dry, and I don't think it's either or. I think you can determine this based on each use case of the event that you wanna publish. So here's how I think about it. So I can boil this down to three different things. Stability, understanding, and consumer requirements. So what do I mean by that? Well, first let's talk about stability. So if events are stable, consider exposing them to outside your boundary. And what I mean by this is specifically is that your events are revolving around business concepts. If those are stable business concepts, you're really likely not likely to be changing them. And that's kind of the why people advocate for integration events is because they're contracts you can version them separately and differently than your internal domain events. If things are in flux as you're developing things and you have other outside boundaries consuming events, you don't wanna to have to deal with, oh, worrying about, okay, if I change this, now we need a version, all this stuff. You'll just be able to change your domain events. But again, if domain events are stable business concepts, they're very, to me, they're not likely to change, especially if you have a foundation of what those business concepts are and you've kind of really solidified that, I do think under this circumstance that not only is it um, practical, it's actually beneficial to publish these types of events. Specifically, if you have long running processes or workflows that really matter about having kind of behavioral events. These aren't CRUD events. These aren't things that you're using for data propagation. 
These are things for workflows, for edit, letting other service boundaries know very specific business concepts of things that have happened. So if you have stable business concepts, business events, there's stability there, then yes, you can publish domain events outside your service boundary. So the second one was related to understanding. And a service boundary is to me kind of a linguistic boundary as well about a, a certain understanding. So Mel Conway posted this uh, back in 2020, uh, almost a year ago from me recording this, I guess. And his comment was, his tweet was, a linguistic comment is when a politician greets you with, how are you? And a nurse greets you with, how are you? They are totally different questions, even though they sound the same and are spelled the same. So the thing here is, again, a service boundary has an ambiguous language. You're defining these things. If you publish a domain event that is very specific in how it's worded in the event type, it may not mean anything meaningful to another service boundary. So do you want to publish that domain event that is very specific and uh, has some linguistics to it that means something to your service boundary, but may mean something completely separately to another service boundary? So this would be the reason why you may consider not publishing domain events is because if there's something very specific to maybe that part of the subdomain that doesn't really make sense anywhere else and they really can be internal just specific inside domain events so again think about the context and how other boundaries um, would view or perceive this type of event so the last one is related to consumer requirements now this does seem odd because you would think, okay, well I'm publishing events. The whole point of this decoupling is that I publish events and I don't know who's consuming it. I don't know what other service boundaries actually even care about the events that I'm publishing. And while that's true, I do think practically it's not exactly that cut and dry as well. It's because there's different types of events that I've covered before that have different use cases. So if you're talking about a long running process where you have some type of event choreography, and check out my video on uh, event choreography and orchestration, where you have a long running process where one event is published, some other uh, service boundary is consuming that event and it's a part of the process. It does the work that it needs to do once it's consumed an event, it publishes another event and maybe some other service boundary picks that up. And it's basically completing this long running process. So there's a difference between using events for notifications like this, uh, a part of the long running process, or using uh, events specifically for propagating data where you have more kind of crud oriented things. So are you doing kind of crud property base where you have um, really crud driven UI or do you have more of a task based UI where you're publishing more behavioral events that are used for notifications? So what that looks like is are you publishing a product updated event or are you publishing an inventory adjusted event? which is more of a behavioral event. So again, it depends what kind of events you're publishing. And that's why under some, under some circumstances, you may wanna be publishing different types of events depending on what the actual consumers require. So while I do get the whole decoupling of I'm publishing events and I don't really care who's consuming them, I don't think is that practical because most times you do care about as a consumer getting specific data. You care about if you're doing some data propagation because you want a local cache. But if you're part of a long running uh, process or business workflow, you do care about those domain events, about specific things happening because you need to react to, for example, an inventory adjusted. That's something that maybe some other part of your system actually cares about that happening. They do, how do they distinguish between an inventory adjustment, which is changing the quantity on hand versus a product updated? Well, they would have to infer that based off the actual event data. So again, consumer requirements, I do actually think of play a role in this. So should you only use domain events for inside a boundary? And if you need to expose anything to other service boundaries, use integration events? Well, I think that's a good guideline. I think it's missing nuance. If you have stable business concepts and events that are understood the same way by other service boundaries, yes, I actually think you can expose and publish domain events outside your service boundary. However, if you have events that are more crud in nature because you're using data propagation, maybe you wanna uh, actually instead transform domain events into some more crud based event carry state transfer where you can publish those events, those integration events to outside boundaries because they want a local cache and they just want the data.
But again, if domain events are understood by other service boundaries, and maybe they're part of a long running process, that's a workflow, then maybe you don't need integration events. Maybe you can just publish those domain events because they're under, again, they're understood by the other service boundaries and they're used kind of in a long running process using event choreography. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.